working on it. He's working on it. It's been a it's it's a slow, slow, slow work in progress. He's a, he's a work in progress. Big work in progress. Yeah, because you, you never know when I may get hit by the proverbial beer truck. Of course, I'd mess up a good truck. So. <laughs> you said beer truck, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, you can tell we're wrong down this point. Oh, yeah. It's loud. It's loud big. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. I'm going I'm to send these around the room. I'm gonna send these around the room. It's got a it's got a list of all the happenings between next Sunday to August the twenty second. Cool. It's pretty good. One per family. One per family. Oh my! Do you want me to take it? If you don't mind, Mark Mark's already got one. We got one. We've got one. You got one. Just me. Yeah. Hmm. While Francis is doing that, we got any prayer request? I got one. I got one. Melissa. Lisa. Yeah. She said surgery. He has another surgery coming. Thank you. Okay. On her back. Okay. On her back, and then she has one on her shoulder coming. Um, my sister-in-law's brother went to be with the Lord on Monday. Uh, we do praise for his brain cancer. Was that Gary? Gary. Okay. Did you get one of these? No, we haven't. Okay. And um, do you have one of those? My friend uh, Becky is going to have. I mean, uh, my friend Becky is going to have uh, back surgery, but she has a lot of complications, and they've already told her that uh, she'll have to have more than one surgery. She has scoliosis of the spine. She has arthritis in the spine, and she has another condition. So she's very discouraged. She was hoping that that would help her, but they told her. That Charlotte's uh, Charlotte's is back and shoulder or neck and shoulder? Uh, she had back, uh, like a back surgery or something. She had a stimulator put in her back. Okay. And then she is having a rotator cuff surgery okay. on June 16th. Kim, anything about Tina? Yeah, I continue praying for her. They know she has cancer somewhere, but they still are not finding the tumor. It must be hidden well. Uh, but uh, the neurologist is now going to also test her for MS. Is, is, this, is this your sister? That's this what is I, my sister, yes. Okay, that's what I wrote down. Okay. She lives here in Deer Park. Okay. Uh, and then continue praying for my mom. Of course, she's still recovering from her breast surgery. and It's slow going at her age. <coughs> I'm sorry, I had one that little one. Uh, my niece, Nikki, is having hip replacement uh, June 16th. My niece, Nikki, is having hip replacement. I'll continue to pray for Joanne. She's still struggling with her back. And uh, had a procedure done on Friday. It helped a little bit, but not a lot. And so we're going to, we were supposed to be leaving on a long 20 day camping deal. And I'm fixing to cancel everything today and see if I can get her into a back doctor or a neurologist just to. If nothing else, put her mind at ease. She's worried to death that she's got a nerve problem. And it, if I can either get somebody to substantiate that or say, no, that's not it, one way or the other. So just keep her in your prayers. Anybody else? Anybody else? Russell, Russell went back to work Friday. And they've got them scheduled for surgery on the 28th. That's your son? Yes. The 8th? Yes. 
fall asleep, just punch me. I will. <laughs> I shouldn't have turned this on. <laughs> Yeah, no. I will. I'll, I'll punch you, but I'll, I'll, I'll change the book. Okay. I'll change your Bible. Yeah. Up and then wake me up. I'll tell you, read right here. Read, read, read the next verses. <laughs> uh, Rip to do. <laughs> had a buddy of mine in high school that, that passed away a couple of years ago, and we were in the same. We grew, we grew, grew up together, I think, from the fifth grade all the way till we graduated. Oh Gary Morgan. Mm hmm. Um, <laughs> I think everybody knew Gary, <laughs> but uh, any, anyway, <laughs> we had to, we we didn't have a lot of classes. Boy, our senior, we had a lot of classes together. And I mean, who who couldn't stay awake? He couldn't stay awake, and I mean, it was just too easy. I mean, he'd fall asleep. The teacher would call him to read because he knew he was sleeping. I'd flip his book over, say, so right here. <laughs> <laughs> it was never right, and he did it every time. <laughs> I mean, I could do it to him every other day, and he'd still do it. Like, why do you do that to me? I'm going to shoot because I can. My brother was like that. He, my brother, my brother, he didn't have to study. He just he breezed high school, and he'd fall asleep a lot in class. And he graduated, got his master's, and he went back to our high school to teach. <laughs> and the first thing that happened when he walked in the teacher's lounge, one of his old teachers looked at him and said, Now, John, you know, teachers can't sleep in class. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's not good. Yeah, he found that out real quick. <laughs> Billy, pray for us, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to uh, honor you and praise you. Thank you for giving life to us, dear Lord, not mm. only here on earth, but in heaven and ever after. We just cannot get over the fact that you sent your son here to die for us. Uh, for as bad as we are, we, we don't deserve what we got coming, but we know you will give it to us anyway. Lord, we want to lift up these that prayer requests that were made. Uh, all the militia list, uh, the others that were mentioned, dear Lord, and just pray for all of them. Give them the strength to go through what they're doing. Uh, give the doctors the right answers, whatever the answers may be, good, bad, or otherwise, uh, then at least they can be treated. We just ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're in Matthew chapter 13, and it's a story about the seeds. And the sower. And the sower. You know, those little bee seeds that scatter all around. Mm -hmm. Hey, is that it? <laughs> scatter all around some of the weeds. What was it, Kim, Melissa, some of the weeds? Uh, where is it going? Like little bee seeds. Little bee seeds. Scattered, scattered, scattered all around. All around. Mm -hmm. Where is it going? It's like little bee seeds scattered all around. Some in the road, some in the weeds. But everywhere you look at the time, <laughs> can't can't cannot do this lesson and not think about that. I mean, I can't. I mean, I can see Mike Speck up there doing. Oh, that. I, I'm <laughs> telling you, man, I, that was the day, wasn't it? Oh, oh man. Anyway, any anyhow, it, it, uh, I'll just stop. Anyway, um, can't can't look at these verses, but I, I'll say this. Um, I don't know that I, I don't know that I've studied the lesson this lesson before. I know I've heard it. Um, and so the, the, the guy that, that God gave us a lesson here, he points out for sure three things. You've got a sower, a seed, and a soil. Mm -hmm. There's three things involved in getting it done. And the key one's the soil. And then you think and you think, wow, that's the key one? That's mm -hmm. the key one. So if you look at Matthew 13, and, and you're going to get to read the second part. You want to um, turn the page on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, chapter 13, is, I know it's supposed to be 8 through 18. Uh, 3 through 8, I mean, but I'm going to read 3, 1 through 8. The same, day, the same day went Jesus out on the house and sat by the seaside. Say that fast. 
The great multitude was gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them, and spake many things unto them, parables saying, Behold, a sower went forth and sowed, or sowed, went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the way, the side, and the fowls came and devoured them up, them little bitty birds, or birds eating them little bitty seeds. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. If you ever watch Blue Bloods, which I like to watch that a lot, mm -hmm. they use that word forthwith a lot. And I, 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 I thought about that when I looked at it, so you don't see that word too much. And that means like in a hurry. Right, For, now. right now. They sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched and they were burnt and dried up. And, they, and, they, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, sprung, uh, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. And others fell into the ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And verse 9 who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let them hear. So, I never thought about it. Again, I haven't really done a lot of studying on those verses. Uh, it did catch my eye where it, the, the lesson points out what I said earlier. You've got a sower, a seed, and a soil. Um, I can tell you how to be an unsuccessful gardener. <laughs> I can tell you about some that are good at it. My grandfather was extremely good at it. Um, we didn't, he didn't plant the way that Jesus is talking about in this parable because according to the study, um, and I don't know you guys that's gone to the Holy Land, I don't, I don't know if you'd see anything like that. And I'm thinking about the day and time, but they literally would just broadcast with your hands. That's what they call, they, they make broadcasters now. You put it just, Turn a little deal, and it'll, it'll throw it for you. But I have, um, I, I never watched my grandfather plant that away. We literally, he would plow, make rows, and make, pass in between the rows. And then he'd take the hoe handle and drag it right down the center of that row. And then about every foot or so, I guess, he'd drop some seed. But everything, other than tomatoes, he planted everything by seed. So he really, he didn't lose anything. But according to, according to Jesus, what he's doing, and we talk about this in our study group a lot, Jesus was really, he was really good about giving you a word picture. And we talked about, Paul was too. He'd take, he take real life exam, examples to talk about heavenly things. He, he'd use an example. Paul used the, the armor, mm -hmm. talk about the armor of God or whatever. A parable is taking something that you deal with every day and and telling a story with that to explain the heavenly thing he was trying to explain. Jesus was very good at that because it put it in perspective for people of the time. Using a sower at the time because agriculture was real big at that time. That's what people did. That's how you survived. So he, he chose an, an example. Paul used the example of the armor because a Roman soldier was something that was very well known at that time, but not necessarily for good reasons. But So it was, it was painting a picture that you could put in your mind that you was something you were accustomed to every day. And it's still that way. As a teacher, if you can help your students visualize something, it's going to take root and sprout a lot better than just weeding something and not helping them to see. They weren't, they, they, they were not so big about that. Things have changed. They weren't so big about that when we were in school. Um, the, the, te yeah, the, the teacher, the teachers back then, for whatever reason, I was comatose in junior high. I don't know what I don't know what was wrong with me in junior high. I might, might because I was I, I was running around with her the whole time I was in junior high. But uh, yeah, blame it on her. That was in a good way. You were a good distraction. In high school, I don't know everything kind of snapped. But 
all I remember, and, and even growing until I got into work and got into college, that, that people would tell you, 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 if you're memorizing something, you're not really learning anything. That's, that is so far from the truth. It's not funny. Because if you memorized it, you've learned it. I mean, that's all there is to it. And it took, it took them a while, and I know Brad's done some of this too, but it took them a while where I worked to kind of finally realize it was easier to teach like a mechanic or something like that when you give them a video to look at with instructions where they could see it being done. Adult, adult, adult. You said it was going to be this way. It's going to be this way. <laughs> adult learning. Adults learn visually. Mm -hmm. And if you can repeat something four times, somehow, if you're, so if you're teaching something, if you can repeat it four times, you can get, if you can get the people to repeat it four times, odds are they'll commit that to memory. The more you, the more you can give somebody a visual image, it's kind of like what Kim, it's kind of like an icebreaker. If I'm, if I'm going to talk to you about something that's technical, if I just come at you from the technical standpoint, hmm. you're probably not going to get you to. Yeah, I'm good. done. I check out. You, you're going to check out. But if I can, if I can tie that into a visual picture of something you do daily or something that's common occurrence, that's it's like an icebreaker. It kind of opens your eyes up and say, okay, well, yeah, I, okay, I see where you're going with this. And that's what Jesus was doing here. That that um, I popped off and said I check out, and I instantly. In the, in the guys in the study group and know, but I instantly may, see, I instantly mess with Brother Ron, but it made me think Brother Ron is is struggling right now with his health. Nice. He is, uh, yeah. he thinks or the doctor thinks uh, he didn't tell me not to say anything. Uh, the doctor thinks that they, he may have some structural problems, mm -hmm. like in his hips and legs, mm -hmm. and he's he's fallen a few times, mm -hmm. and so it's he's fixing it. He's fixing to start therapy. Several several weeks or more of therapy. So we y'all, I, I didn't I didn't do that. And I should have because he he's gonna watch this to critique me, but uh, he he's got. We need to pray for him. We do. So y'all remember y'all remember pray for Brother Ron. So so you know repeating something. One of the things I learned believe believe this or not when I say this, y'all can believe it if you want to. Um, I took a course in professional business speaking. And one of the th one of the things they told you, is, which was followed right behind my third year of English in college, which was that was horrible. Um, you write, if you do a speech or you write a report, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Does that make sense? Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. That's only three times, but the more you repeat it, the better it's going to be. One of the things that was in the lesson that I caught, and this is, this is the whole crux of the lesson right here. We've talked about all the sowing and reaping and all that, no reaping. Um, it, say, it said, if you, if you looked at your lesson, one of the things it said, unfortunately, many Christians see evangelism <laughs> as, just, as just that. It's a sales pitch. And you think, that's kind of bad. But you're, you're trying to, you're trying to persuade them to, t to believe in Jesus. I was going to say, sell, you're trying to sell Jesus to them. That doesn't sound good, <laughs> but it's a fact. Um, in Jesus' parable of the sower, we see, we see that the life-changing gospel is a, mess is a message we are called to share regardless of how others respond. We're not responsible for, for their reception of the word. And, and for uh, for us in in this room probably, and because I'm not I'm not the only one guilty. But that is a cliche to the max. We know it. All we do, all we can do, is share the gospel. We don't. We can't save them or anything. But we can tell them about the guy, the the person that can. And it's up to them. To receive, it, to receive, to receive it. it. The thing, the whole deal behind the sower of the seeds. Who are you supposed? Who are you supposed to witness to? Everybody. 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 You don't get to select the soil. <laughs> we don't know enough. We can't see inside somebody's heart. 
we don't know enough. We're, we're not able to discern somebody's you, heart. You can't judge, but you can't discern. Well, you by discern, you can't. You don't know their heart. So you're not supposed to be picking and choosing the soil you throw the seeds on. Not like, unlike Brother Allen's grandfather, where he had his soil prepared and he went That's down right. and he did it specifically. You don't. We don't get to do that. We we're supposed to be broadcast seeding and cover all the ground. Now, whether it takes root and grows or not is not on us. We're just called to throw the seeds. I'm gonna I'm gonna 95% agree with what he just said. Because well, it, that's that's a that's a plus. It's usually less than that. No, but in because that that word discern, we just that's like to to me is new. I mean, we just figured that, I just figured that out um, about a year ago. And so the difference between judging, we're not, we're not to judge anybody. But even in the lesson it says, okay, and like Brad said, well, my grandfather prepared the soil. It doesn't mean that they didn't prepare the soil, but what Jesus is saying, if you just spend your time there, you're not getting my word out to everybody. You're missing people. And so, so the whole point, he set it up perfectly. You just sow the seed and I'll do the rest. Now, where the seed lands, in, in what? Well, let's get to your part. You want to read the second part? Because I, don't. Cause I, I moved my Bible so you couldn't turn the page. <laughs> I can't read it even with my glasses on. Man. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth mm -hmm. they that which was sown in his heart, this is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receives seed in the stony place is the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not rooted himself, but doeth for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and care of this world and, de and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which, was also, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So this is Jesus explaining to the disciples because if you read the whole thing, the disciples still went back to him and said, what do you mean by that parable? What, what did you mean by that? So this is him explaining. They, get, the, the it, they, get, it, they get it for the third time. He, yeah. he gives them the parable. He explains the parable. Then they have to, when they go to the side because they didn't raise their hand because they were embarrassed, they get him off to the side and say, you want to run that by us again? Excuse me. I'm not I'm really sure I gathered what you were talking about. The, 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 go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. It's just he, he goes through each one of the soils again, mm -hmm. but he describes it in a little more detail. He doesn't leave it to guessing. The, 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 <clears throat> the one that falls in the path where it's too hard to take root, that's a hardened heart. It's not going to take root there. And the devil is just, it's real easy for the devil to sneak in. And all the good things that you heard and learned, he just picks it away from you like the birds eating the seeds. Has no chance to grow at all. And that's why it's not just the words we say, but the life that we lead that's pouring. Sometimes people are just watching us and we have no idea we're planting seeds in their mind. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. That's good, Kim. That's good. That's good. Mm. The uh, on the stony. I thought that, that, that was good. That, leave her alone, Billy. She's on a roll, man. Hey. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, that, 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 huh? Nothing. Must be a private joke. She lies. I, I, I think I heard what she said. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to stay out of that. Just let it go. Just let it go. But. Um, so, I mean, if I don't. I'm gonna forget. Go ahead. So when you said it, I had I had another I had a th uh, thought process. Gonna believe it or not, it's it's a short train that I have in there, and if I don't say it, it's gonna be gone. It's gonna be it's gonna leave the station. But what you said it is it is the critical. 
I still, just like we just got through talking, if you show somebody something, if you give them a word picture, if you show it to them, I mean, I'll never forget that timeline that D.L. showed us when he talked about that. I forget what the lesson was where he strung that rope out with the clothespins. Y'all remember that? Man, that was good. Then he, then he did one where they wandered through the wilderness and he used people in the... D.L. was using word pictures. He was trying to get our attention. That, that's better. So our actions... If our mouth say one, says one thing and our actions don't display that, then that, that's a, they're going to see what we do and not what we say. One of the things that I was thinking about as I read through this lesson, when you said, when I said the 95%, it depends on what you're looking at. It's, it, he said, he told the disciples, go out and tell everybody. And what he's saying here is just be careful because I want you to tell everybody. So you Christian that's going to tell everybody, let me give you some examples. So the word. Some, some of the things you're going to have a room full of people. Some of the things you, that you say is going to go in one ear and out the other. That's the, the birds getting it. Other things that you say, may it may take hold, but it's not going to last long. Ever seen that before? And then, then some of it, somehow or another, you see people get involved and all of a sudden, it wears off after a few years. Or when you wonder, like, what happened? That's the, that's the thorns. That's the world choking it out. And then there's the ones that when, they, when you share it, they're here and you couldn't get rid of them if you wanted to. I got a whole room full of them here right now. Well, the thing, and the thing is, if you share the word with somebody, what are the, what are the odds? Well, that you sharing with them is the first time they've heard that. Mm. Slim to none. Right Slim here. to none. I mean, mm. hopefully, anyway. Day, I think, than it, what, well, say it, say it, babe, again. What, what was you going to say? Well, more so today. I, I, because there's a lot of people that have never even stepped in the doors of any kind of church. Right. That's, that's, that's where I'm going. I mean, well, I, I'm convinced of that. But, it, but here again, my point was, the odds, you don't know whether they've heard it again, mm. whether they're hearing it again or not, right? That's right. why you tell them, right? All right, just because somebody doesn't receive the word the first time doesn't mean that, that after they've heard the word, the Lord's not going to work on their heart, and they may have to hear it a couple of times before it finally grabs root and takes hold. You don't know how many times they've heard it, and you may be the one that breaks them over that point that finally gets through and, and softens their heart up and lets, them, lets it take root and stay. So here again, we, we, can't, we don't know that. You're not, we're not to worry about that. Our That's, job is to sow the seed and just keep throwing the seed. And if you keep throwing it on that ground that's not real fertile, eventually maybe it'll soft, maybe between the birds pecking at it and, be, and chewing on the soil and loosening the soil up, and, and other maybe things. it'll start taking root. I mean, all, 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 all four of them, there's four of them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All four of them, the worst, the, the worst one is the first one. Yeah. And, and again, I, I, I go back, and, and babe, what you said is where I was going. I, I thoroughly believe right now, that there's, there's two sides of that coin. I don't think there's anybody that you can run into that hasn't heard about God. I mean, you, you're going to hear it on TV. It'd be negative or positive, but you're going to hear it on TV. The thing, the thing you don't want it, that they don't hear and they don't want you saying on TV neither is what? Jesus. Jesus. They don't want you talking about him at all. They'll let you talk about God all day long. But they won't let you talk about Jesus. Now, I think there's a good possibility that we have a couple of generations out there that probably have no idea who Jesus is. No idea, because they've not been inside of a church. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what you were, but, but Daphne was trying to say is that, and I 100% I agree with that. Here, here's the thing. The, the, the biggest thing, and based on what, uh, listen to what you said a minute ago, it's, it's finally soaking in. The biggest thing Jesus is trying to do right now is don't tarry, sow the seed every chance you get. Now, what are we, does it end there? Are we just to sow the seed and do nothing else? No, it doesn't. You circle back around. You're, you're going to. Paul does it all through the New Testament. 
He circles back around constantly. This whole travel was nothing but circling, circling around. around. Kim? You have to disciple and have mentors. I mean, Sue Harris has been Annie's mentor for <laughs> years. And things that I could tell her <coughs> in and out her ears, but if Sue tells her, it's a whole different ballgame. And that's how it is sometimes with people when you're sharing things and you don't think you're getting through, but then somebody else talks to them and things start to click. Anybody got any kids that didn't do that? <laughs> I just, put your hand down. I want you to tell them to raise your hand down. I don't, down. I don't man. They listen to somebody else quicker than they listen to me. Oh, yeah. Well, then it's not, it's not just your kids, it's anybody. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you could be talking to anybody about right. it and they go, you know, I just heard somebody say that the other day. You know, I've heard that before. Yeah. I've, or that, yeah, you know, there must be something to that. I'm getting it, re you know, repeat times. I'll give you a good example, a visual example. Years ago, I brought a friend kicking and screaming to church with me. The only reason she came was to shut me up. She accepted the Lord, and she got Brother Dunn to go visit her husband. And you know what he told Brother Dunn? I was born a Catholic. I'll die a Catholic. Mm. And he thought that was pretty hard. Two or three weeks later, he walked that aisle. <laughs> I mean, but the power of prayer mm. and that Holy mm. Spirit can change anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's here again. Yeah. We're just to throw the seed. It's up to the good Lord mm -hmm. to work on. That's right. Yeah. That's 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 the Holy Spirit. That's His job. That's His job, man. That's His <laughs> job. Do that. Yeah. Our 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 job is is to. Is to throw that seed out there and try to get and hope it takes root. If 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 we did it, if we try to do it, we'll mess it up. We'll mess it up. You, I mean, Daphne's Daphne's uncle. It, it, you, I guarantee you, if you met him, you would have swore the seeds got that the birds got the seeds going to him. They caught it in midair. It didn't even hit the ground. And buddy, about seventy, he saw the light. And it didn't matter what we said mm -hmm. at all. Somebody said something mm -hmm. other than us, and it stuck. So we, we, we sow the seeds, but you don't ever quit sowing the seeds. Mm -hmm. no. You it's, sow them to everybody, but you keep sowing. But, but what I'm saying, and Kim, now that she used that, the, 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 the D word, discipleship, but there's another D word. It's called discernment. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you, you can tell. Hey, you can get real harsh about it. You can you can talk about the little birds eating the seeds and sing the song. Melissa sang it for us. That's real good. There's going to be another story in the Bible that you're going to read in the New Testament. And God tells him God tells him people that goes into that city, go in that city and share the word with them, and continue to share the word with them. If they don't want to listen to you, what do you do? Dust you shake the dust off your robe and get the heck out. I said heck. I said heck. <laughs> That's a little bit stronger, I think, than the, the little well, seeds. <laughs> your job is to throw the seeds. That's right. You, that's that's our job, and that's all our job. That's all our job is: throw the seed, throw the seed, continue to throw the seed, keep throwing the seed. Sooner or later, whether it's you, your seeds pelting somebody, or somebody <laughs> else's seeds pelting them from the other side. Sooner or later, it's going to get their attention. And if it doesn't, woe be unto them. Mm -hmm. But that's so, not your problem. You, you, you can't, you can't, give you up. can't do you can't that. Give up on people. Yeah. You know, just like he said, my uncle Jack, oh, I cried more tears over him not being saved. And, you know, would talk to him, even though I opened up the surgery. Y'all heard this before. Before he went in, I had to ask Several him times. to tell me he was. And, but it, one person, his wife went to church every single Sunday. It was right across the street from him. And that preacher for years came by every Sunday morning early and drank coffee with Jack. Never gave up. Paid off. Paid off. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> question for Jenny answered this question. Question for our study says, when have you experienced... When have you experienced the gospel landing on good soil? Well, you heard from Jenny. You heard from Daphne. And I, and I, bet, I bet every one of us in here has got a story like that. It's, we got stories just like the other ones where it doesn't seem to work. But that's, like it or not, I understand the parable. I do. I understand it. 
But when you when you when you sow when you when you throw them seeds out there and you see them almost catch it, it's like I got to try it again. But the thing is, is you keep sowing the seed. You see, you don't that, quit. You see that little crack. <laughs> you see that little crack, and you start trying to dart them seeds in that crack. You know what? That's what our Sunday school teachers with those little ones are doing. They're sowing seeds. Boy, well, I mean to tell you too. With the hope that one day they are going to accept Jesus as Savior. So we see seeds being sown every week. There's only a only a couple, two or three people in here. You you don't have you don't have to walk very far just from those two doors into that sanctuary over there, and you'll see the seeds that have been sowed in kids mm -hmm. because they're here serving. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think for us is if if we dwell on it, and that's what he's saying. You can't save them, Alan. All you can do is tell them. You have nothing to do with their salvation. And, and, and shame on you. <coughs> shame on if you shame on them. Shame on you if you tell them. Kim told, said to me, not to her. <laughs> but your actions don't reflect what you're saying. And the, and, the, and it's in this book of Matthew to tell you about that person. If you don't, if you're not living what you're saying, nobody's going to pay no attention to you. Or they're going to pay attention to you. It ain't going to be good. Or they're going to look at what you're doing and saying, nah, I, don't need that. I don't need that. Exactly. King Agrippa was presented the seed, but he he did not. As far yeah, almost, as almost, 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 almost. Almost. Almost had me. Almost. And those will be the words that will haunt him forever. Unfortunately, it wasn't horseshoes or hand grenades. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that... Uh, you, that was, I think, the lesson last Sunday, and I brought that up um, when Paul stood on Mars Hill, and it and it says in there that others just mocked him, and that's that, and others said, "Well, I want to hear some more, Agrippa. You Can almost, you, you almost persuaded me, almost. Yeah, I there read was a song about that. Yeah, almost persuaded. Yeah, anyway, so. when I read the first person, the first example that went through my mind with this with me was the rich. With the, was the rich ruler, mm -hmm. trying to look for him and, and he's he's one in the thorns. Mm. He's one that heard the word and wanted it, but he just couldn't give up what he had. He was more enamored with with his money and everything else, and he just just couldn't give it up. That's a that was the best example I could come up with of of seeds that had fallen among the thorns. That thing is, he didn't know that he didn't know any of that anyway. Boy, yeah. Couldn't tell him that. It wasn't his anyway. Can't take it with you, Can't brother. Take it with you. Yeah. Can't take it with you. I've, I, we had a lesson. It's been a while back where where it was talking about the fact that you can't take it with you, that all your hard work, all your life, and you're going to leave it to somebody that's just going to destroy everything that you did <laughs> and take everything you had and do everything with it that you didn't want to do. So get over it. <laughs> So, um, dang, we, we, we're kind of buzzed right through that one, didn't we? We're kind of early. Yeah, Kim, Kim got going over there. She taught pretty she did a good job teaching. Mm -hmm. I want to pass it. Yeah. <laughs> did I wrap it up too soon for you? No, 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 no. I, no, but I mean, it's, you know, you, I have, I personally, a lot of, a lot of Jesus's parables, I some, I have a hard time with sometimes. But the, but the good part, the good thing about that is it makes me go look mm -hmm. for explanations of why what he's trying to say because I don't understand it. So I'll go to Wearsby or whoever and, and, and try to get a, a different account to understand it. It works. It works. Like Kim said, the teachers nowadays, that you give an example, you put it in real life situations you keep throwing that seed and you keep living it and showing it and, and hopefully there's no guarantees but hopefully the, the person you're throwing the seeds at will it'll take root that's your hope but you can't do it 
It's not up to you. Was I done? No, and no, I was just, I got, I mean, I got a thousand things running through my mind. And I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to, to do that. It's a, it's a good lesson. It's a good parable. Uh, there's all kind of good parables in there, and they all they all kind of intertwine. Uh, the one I quoted, the, the story I quoted, where you shake literally shake the dust off your robe and kick the dust off your shoes and turn around and leave. That's that's similar to this right here. Because again, there's nothing we can do other than share the word. That's that's it. We can't make them or force them. Um, and you do growing growing up, even like with our kids, not necessarily our kids, because we. We learn our lessons from our kids. We can tell them something, and they just look at us. Somebody else can tell them the same exact thing. Like, oh, okay. You know, it's like, well, all right. Yeah. But, you know, I got to be about 20, 25 years old. My parents were just, I was finding out, they just weren't as dumb as I thought they were. See, it's all, all of us yeah. are at the, about the same age, though. When I'm 23, my parents are like, God, that's the smartest people in the world. I wish I'd listen to them. But, I, wish know, I'd I am listen. so thankful that there's Christian people out there that will mentor my children even as they're grown, uh -huh. that they have Christian people that they can go to that I can trust to disciple them and to mentor them in the direction that they need. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mentored Robert somewhat. But it wasn't good. Is that what happened? you. He ran straight. He ran straight. I scared him. I scared the snot out of that boy. It, I mean, and I, I wasn't a whole lot. I wasn't a whole lot different now than I am, or then than I am now. And I mean, it didn't. He, he jumped in the backyard or something. Yeah, wasn't yeah they were just running, running through the neighborhood. Running through the neighborhood, and he jumped in the backyard. He just happened to jump in the backyard while I was back there. Like, boy, what you doing? Over he went. I thought I, I laughed. I told that man, I hope he didn't hurt himself. <laughs> it's, ama it's amazing what happens when somebody my size snurks and snatches the door open real quick and goes, What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the that one day and Chloe was at the door and she bawled for her house. <laughs> you were being bad. Well, again, I tell y'all. Me and Billy used to be good about going and visiting until we they we got realized they weren't opening the door. They peek out the window and said, "Don't open, don't open the door. Mm. <laughs> Just don't open the door." Oh man, let me pray. Grace seven five. Oh, stop. I'm sorry. Steve, pray for us. Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Father, for blessing and being with us. Thank you, Father, for studying your word a little bit. I just pray that you spirit our pastor this morning. Lord, just lift him up and use him, Father, in a special way today. Lord, for everyone that's in. And then that service, Father, that doesn't know you, I pray, Father, that you'll, uh, that you'll soften their hearts, Father, and that they'll come down and accept you, Lord, before it's too late. Lord, I pray that you just go with us now, God, and direct us. Lord, I lift up Brother Ron to you. Mm -hmm.